Hello everyone and thank you for joining us for another lesson today. This is part two of Decoding Skill 2. So if you haven't watched part one, make sure you go back and watch that. In fact, all of the lessons go in order, so it's really important to do them in order. Um, if you are watching the recording, feel free to stop it and start it as many times as you need to because we want this to go at your pace. Um, and if you're watching it live, you can always replay the video as many times as you need to. The links that we will provide for this lesson to give you extra practice are going to be available in the chat if you're watching live, or they will be available next to the video if you're watching the recording. The um, lesson that we'll go over today is the second part of Decoding Skill 2, and that's Reading Horizons Discovery Lesson 66, Reading Horizons Elevate Lesson 61. I'm Chloe, and I'm a Reading Horizons Implementation Coach, and I'll be playing the part of a student today. And this is our friend Erica, and she'll be our teacher today. Thanks, Chloe. We're glad that you've all joined us today for the second part of Decoding Skills 2. You will need a few materials for the dictation part. I'm going to use a dry erase marker and a whiteboard, but you may not have those at home. Paper, pencil, crayons, markers, highlighters, anything like that that you can write with will be great. I'm going to give you just a second to um, collect your items and also remind you, if you did the practice page that was assigned from the first part of Decoding Skill 1, you want to grab that now, excuse me, Decoding Skill 2, Part 1, you want to get that now because we're going to go over the answers. And I'm going to leave this slide up just for a moment. If you have yours out already, you can compare your answers. You could use a cell phone or a camera, maybe take a quick picture and go back when you have a little more time and compare your answers. I'm going to give you just another few seconds to take care of those things. And families, I want to remind you too that with each one of these practice pages, it's super important. We're not just practicing marking the words, but we're practicing reading. So spend some time, students, reading to your family members, reading to a fluent reader who can help you if you have any struggles. Okay, decoding skill two review. Real quick, I'd like us to take a look at the decoding skill posters. You notice at the top we have decoding skill one. We've learned that several lessons ago. We know that one must run. We're talking about decoding skill one. Let's talk about decoding skill two. We learned in decoding skill two, two will split. split. Let's look at an example of that. We know that when a vowel is followed by two consonants, the consonants will split. So let's mark our vowels in this word. Looking between our two working vowels, we have the letters M and P, two. And we know decoding skill two says two will split. split. The first consonant will stay with the first syllable. And the second consonant will move to the next syllable. You can see that here, we have each syllable marked and proven our word is campus. Campus, campus. campus. very good. I'm gonna let you practice a couple at home before we move on. So this part in our lesson, you will need to pull out your writing board and your writing utensil. Good job, Chloe, I see that you have yours on hand. Okay, I'm gonna dictate a few words and allow you to prove those. Are you ready? I'm ready. The first word is upset, upset. Upset, upset. Now you see my board. On your screen, I'm going to write the word and prove it and let you compare your board to see how you did. Like my vowels, two constants, they split, proving each syllable. Let's read this word together. Does yours look like this? Great job, it does. Now let's re read it together. The word is 
upset. 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 If I'm upset, I may be sad or down about something. Let's do another one. Ready? The word is transit. 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 Very good. Transit means a passage. Um, an example of transit would be a train. Okay. Friends, I'm going to give you just a second. Make sure that you have that spelled correctly. Sometimes over video, it <clears throat> seems a little hard to hear all the sounds sometimes. Okay, compare yours to mine. Does it look this way? <clears throat> Great job. Let's do one more. Good job, Chloe. The next word is gumbo. 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 My grand seafood gumbo is spicy. Gumbo. Okay, friends, check your answers. <clears throat> okay, before we move on, if you notice that you had a little trouble with this, maybe some of your markings weren't the same as mine, if you will go back, do the first part of this lesson, and then come and watch, uh, then catch up with us and watch the recording here, okay? Let's go on to the next part. Okay, it's time for the instruction part. As a reminder, you won't need any materials. Put the cap on your marker, put it to the side, your pens, pencils. Your job is just to watch and listen, all right? Good job. Thank you for being such a good example, Aunt Chloe. <laughs> like words that follow decoding skill one, words that follow decoding skill two can also use the letter Y as a working vowel in either syllable. Let me show you. We're gonna prove a, a couple of words together to see how this works. So watching me on this word, moving left to right, as we always do, I'm going to mark the Y first as a, as a vowel. Now, Chloe, how do I know that Y is not acting as a consonant in this word? It's not a consonant because if it was the first letter, it would be a consonant. Anywhere else, it's going to be a vowel. Very good, because it's not the first letter of the, of the word or the syllable. So it is a vowel. Now, what will be the next marking? The vowel A. The vowel A. And finally, do you see another one, Chloe? The ST blend. That's right, the ST blend. Now let's return to the first vowel. Where will we divide the syllable? Oh, we'd look we between how the many? vowels. Yep. Thank you, yes. And we look between we... our two working vowels. I'm sorry, it's fine. Come on. That's right. Two consonants? Go ahead. Two consonants in between those vowels? Two will split. So that's how I know to divide between M and N. Great job. Two will split. You're absolutely right. Now, focusing on this first syllable after we've boxed it in, does Y have another working vowel before it, Chloe? No. No, it does not. So we know that Y will borrow the sound of I. So I'm going to place an I in the neck of my Y, following my five phonetic skills. Which phonetic skill does this syllable follow? It follows phonetic skill one because there's one guardian consonant. That's right. We only have one guardian consonant. So it follows phonetic skill one, proving our vowel to be short. 
And that first syllable also has one more neat thing. Do you see it, Chloe? What do we know happens when an I follows that G? That's G right. I is going to give us that J. rainbow J. That's right. Very good. So this syllable would be pronounced Jim. Jim. So let's move to the second syllable. Following our phonetic skills, up and around the top, we have a blend. We know in this case, that's how many sounds? Two. So following phonetic skill two, we know that the vowel is proven to be short, correct? So looking at this second syllable only, I'm going to read that to you. And it reads as nast, yeah. nast. Okay, but I want you to listen as I pronounce this word. The word is gymnast, gymnast. Did you hear the nast when I said gymnast? Or did you hear a schwa? A schwa in the second we syllable. We heard that tricky schwa. We sure did in the second syllable. So we will replace this short mark with our schwa sound. Now let's read the word. Gymnast. 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 Good. Gabby is a talented gymnast. Let's look at another one. Okay. Words that have Y in the first syllable often have rainbows, but there are many other decoding skill two words with rainbows too. Let's look. For example, the, the word sentence has a rainbow S. Watch as I prove this word. My vowel E, the next vowel E, and another vowel E. Let's return to my two working vowels, the first two working vowels. Between the two working vowels, I see we have two consonants. And we know that this coding skill two says, Two consonants will split. So I'll draw a line between my N and my T and box in the first syllable. Phonetic skill one says the vowel will be short. And let's read this first syllable together. Sin. 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 Okay. Now let's move to the second syllable and prove it. I notice I have my silent E at the end. I'll go ahead and mark through it. Also here I have an E following a C, which I know makes the rainbow S or bridge S sound. Now friends, stay with me, okay? We have a rainbow S and another consonant. So here we have two consonants making two guardians, proving our vowel to be, <laughs> excuse me, my fingers got ahead of me. Proving our vowel to be short for phonetic skill two. But that would be tense, tense. And do we say sentence or sentence? Do you hear the schwa? Sentence. Yes. So let's replace where the short mark would be over this E with our schwa sound. Now we'll box in our final syllable. And the word is sentence. Can you use sentence in a sentence? <laughs> sure. Everybody at be home, be thinking of your sentence and share that with a family member. I think my sentence will be, I will try to write the longest sentence possible. Good sentence, Chloe. Hope your sentence was good at home too. Help me mark the vowels in this word. Chloe, will you lead this for us, please? Yes. So the first vowel is the U. The next vowel is the next. Y. Very good. Let's prove the first syllable together. Notice here we have two consonants and two will split. Split. Following phonetic skill number one. Our first syllable is short, bun. Now let's focus on the second syllable. Here, 
Words that follow decoding skill two also use Y as a working vowel in the second syllable, just like decoding skill one. So let's look at this last syllable. Is Y a working vowel? Yes. Yes. Does it have another working vowel in the word? Yes. Before it? It does. Is Y the last letter in this word? Yes. It is. Okay, friends. When Y is the last letter and it has another working vowel in front of it, it's going to borrow the sound from E. Okay? So, Y is at the end of a multisyllabic word. There's another working vowel in front of it. We know that it is going to take the sound of E. I'm going to put an E in the neck. I'm also going to use my phonetic skills, and I know phonetic skill three tells me a vowel standing alone is going to be long. I will box in this last syllable. Now, friends, help me read this word. The word is bunny. 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 I have a white fluffy bunny named Easter. Now that you know decoding skill two, you will be able to prove many words that have more than one syllable. It's your turn to practice reading and spelling some of those words following decoding skill two. Now it is time in our lesson to do the dictation. You will need to pull out any of the materials that you have and also I want to share this with you. This is our writing page. There's a link for this in the chat as well as if you're watching the recorded video, there's a link below. If you have a printer and want to print this out at home, that would be excellent. If not, it's okay to write on your own paper. This is just a reminder, at the bottom of our writing paper, it gives you an opportunity, not only you as the student, but someone at home who's working with you to check. And there are a couple things that you can check for here. Most common words, punctuation, capitalization during your sentence formation, as well as the skill words and how well you did on those. Okay, friends, are we ready? Eddie. I'm going to share with you my board at this time so that after we do the first one together, you're able to compare your answers to mine. Okay, and as a reminder, in the past when we did our dictation, I would give the word twice, you would repeat the word twice. But now since we've moved on to larger multisyllabic words, I'm going to spell. And it's so important that you have these spelled correctly before you start proving them. So I'm going to spell them to you, and I'd like you to write while I spell. But before you start proving, take a second and compare your word with mine just to make sure it's spelled correctly before you start trying to prove it. Okay? Okay. All right. Ready to write? Ready. The first word is C. Y M B A L C Y M B A L. Great job. Does yours look like mine? Now you can begin proving. And if we are working this one out together, like I promised you we would, the first mark will be our Y, and we know Y is a working vowel because, I mean, Y is a vowel not. A consonant because it's not the first letter, right? Right. Okay, let's keep working. Next mark we come to would be our vowel A. Looking between our two working vowels, we have two consonants, and I know that two will split. So I'm going to draw my line here between the M and the B. Focusing on the first syllable only now, friends. Y is does not have another working vowel in front of it, so I know it's going to take the sound of I. I will write an I in the neck. Phonetic skill one tells me that this I will be short because the M is acting as a guardian consonant. And one more thing before we move on, friends. We have that I following that C, and we know it makes an S sound. So don't forget your rainbow or your bridge S. Great job. And that first syllable, Sim. Okay, now I'm going to prove my second syllable. Proving the second syllable by what we know already, 
We have a guardian consonant with our L, proving our vowel to be short. Now, friends, when I do this and I look at the pronunciation of this second syllable, I would pronounce that bow. But I know that this word is symbol, like symbol or two symbols crashing each other. Okay, that is not symbol, it is symbol. So I know that this short mark over the second, over the A in the second syllable needs to be a schwa because we pronounce that symbol, not symbol. So go ahead and mark that for yours. Let's box this in. Now we'll pronounce the word correctly. And the word is symbol. 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 Okay. I have. Very good. One symbol that I use my brother's drumstick to hit. Very good. Okay, this one is, this time it's your turn. The next word, remember I'm spelling and you're writing, but check your word first before you start to prove it. C-A-N-D-Y. C-A-N-D-Y. Remember, we're always working left to right underneath the word. Then we're going to divide our first syllable and prove that syllable before we move on. Okay, I finished mine on the board. Let's look at yours, friends. Great job. Good job, Chloe. Did you remember that that's an E at the end? Because Y is the last, the last letter in the word here, and we have another working vowel in front of it. Great job. Let's read each syllable. Can D. Candy. 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 I love to fill my bag full of candy at Halloween. Okay, the next word. F A N C Y. F a N C Y. Okay. Let's see yours at home. How did you do? Good job, Chloe. I noticed that you did not forget the rainbow S at the end. How about you, friends? Did you remember that as well? Remember, not only is the I following the C make the S sound, the E following the C makes the S sound. Great job. Let's move to the next one. Now, friends, this next one has eight letters, so it's going to take us just a bit longer. So make sure that you compare yours to mine before you start your marking. Here we go. P-R-I-N-C-E-S-S. P-R-I-N-C-E-S-S. -S. Make sure yours looks like this before you start your marking. Remember, working left to right, I know we get excited sometimes marking our vowels, but don't forget we want to stay in order and mark things as they come in the word, okay? Does yours look like the one on the board, on my board? Great job, Chloe. Did you remember your rainbow S? Nice job. Let's read each syllable and then read the word together. Princess. 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 
Now, Cinderella is my favorite princess. Student Chloe, because teacher Erica forgot to read the word above princess, will you read that word for us? And then will you use it in a sentence? Excuse me, we did read the word. We didn't use it in a sentence. Will you use it in a sentence for us, please? Sure. Fancy. Fancy. My dress at Halloween was a princess dress that was so fancy. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. All right. You ready for the next one? Yes. B A N D A G E. B A N G. Excuse me. B A N D A G E. Does yours look like mine? Okay, friends, I want us to pause and I'd like for us to do this one together. Okay? Let's work the first syllable, moving left to right. Or excuse me, let's divide into syllables and then we'll prove the first one. The first vowel I come to would be my vowel A. The next vowel I come to is my vowel A. And the next marking I come to is the vowel E. Moving back between my two working vowels, I have two consonants. We know that two will split, so the line will go between my N and my D. Proving my first syllable. I know phonetic skill one says that that's short, that's band, right? Let's move on to the second syllable. I have the E at the end, which I know is silent. I also know that it proves my vowel to be long. And I have the E following my G that makes that J sound. So all of those things are happening in that second syllable. But when I read the second syllable, it says dej. My word is bandage, not bandage. So do you hear the schwa? In the second syllable. Bandage, bandage. That's right. You hear the schwa in the second syllable. So let's change our long E to a short, excuse me. Let's change our long E in the second syllable to the schwa sound. So now we have the word bandage. Read it with me, friends. Bandage. 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 Great job. One more. The word is C O N C E A L. C O N C E A L. Don't forget, compare your compare your word before you start to prove it. Okay, does yours look like mine? When we go to read this word, it reads, sorry, I forgot my S mark, my uh, rainbow S. When you read, go to read this word, it reads conceal. But when I use this word in a sentence or when you hear me say this word, the word is conceal. It's pronounced conceal, not conceal. So do you hear the schwa? Conceal. Which syllable do you hear the schwa in? Conceal. Conceal. The first syllable has a schwa. In the, in the first syllable, that's right. So I'm going to return to the first syllable and change the short mark over my vowel O to make the schwa mark. Now let's read this word together, friends. Good job. I see you changed yours. One syllable at a time. Conceal. 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 Conceal means to place something out of sight. So the glasses, the sunglasses, conceal her eyes. 
Great job. Now we'll play the eraser game. So get your eraser out, cap your marker. Don't forget, we're always going to point and read two times before we erase. So I would like for you to point to the word on your board that is a musical instrument. Ooh. Good job. Are you pointing to symbol? You should be. Let's read it twice and we'll erase it. Symbol. 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 Okay. And the next word, if I were to fall off of my bike and have a cut on my arm, I would need something, I would need one of these to put on my wound, on my boo-boo. Point to it, what is the word? Bandage, bandage. Great job, and you may erase that. Okay, this next word is the opposite of plain or simple, basic. What is the opposite of simple or plain? That's right. Point to it, read it twice. What is the word? Fancy. 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 Thanks, Chloe, for not letting me down. Next, point to the word. That rhymes with Mandy. Read it twice. Candy, candy. Very good. Okay. Point to the word that the first syllable has the schwa sound, the first syllable. Read it twice. Conceal, conceal. Erase it. And you should have one word left on your board if you're winning at the eraser game. And that word is? Princess. Princess. And you may erase. Great job, friends. And also at this time, we're going to, um, if you have that writing sheet and you want to pull that out, go right ahead. We're going to do a dictation sentence. If not, you are, it is. Perfectly okay to write on your whiteboard or on your paper. That's fine. Okay, thank you for showing yours, Chloe. I'm gonna show you my board one more time as we do the dictation sentence. Okay. This word has eight, this, excuse me, this sentence has eight words in it. So just a heads up, if you want to go ahead and write eight blanks on your page to remind you, you can. I'm going to put a little number eight up on the corner of your board as a reminder. And also, remember that every sentence begins with a capital letter as well as ends with some form of punctuation. All right, friends, are we ready? Ready. The sentence is, the princess will not need a fancy bandage. The princess will not need a fancy bandage. The princess, yes. the princess will not need a fancy bandage. The princess will not need a fancy bandage.
great job. And I see that you remembered your punctuation and capitalization. Great job, Chloe. And as a reminder to our friends at home, when we do our dictation sentences, although some of these words we may have practiced earlier proving, we won't prove those within our sentence. Another minute, friends, and we will move on to the transfer portion of our lesson. Okay, and let's read this sentence together before we erase. Okay. The princess Ready? will okay. not need, need a bandage. bandage. Let me try that again. The I was going to say, I'm going to let you read, Chloe, so that okay. they can they can move with you instead of moving with three of us. Go right ahead. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, let's follow along as the teacher points and we'll read with uh and I, you'll read with me okay so the princess will not need a fancy bandage very good moving to our transfer Here's our transfer card. Go ahead, you can put your marker down, your crayon. During part one of Decoding Skill Two with teacher Chloe, we read the first two lines. So today we're just gonna focus on the second two. And once again, Chloe, I'm just going to point and have you read. And don't forget if you're at home, you're reading aloud too. You're following along with Chloe. Here we go. Jumbo extreme, include, invite, complete, 15, complain, subject, fancy, bandage. Very good. And let's look at our sentences. I'm going to place, ah, I'm going to place the pointer here. This is where we're going to pause. This is a natural pause in our sentence. So when we read, I'm going to, our natural pause will be here. I'm going to scoop, but you kind of know where to stop so you can follow along, okay? Chloe, will you read these for us, please? The bag contains a 15-inch bandage. Okay, one more time. The bag contains a 15 inch bandage. Very good. And let's look at the second sentence. Okay, you need to complete your work and we'll pause here. All right, here we go. You need to complete your work before you go to recess. I'm sorry, that was a little tough with that extra line. Great job. Also, don't forget you can print this practice page. If you don't have a printer at home, you can write on your own page, snap a picture of this. This will be your assignment for tonight. Just some additional practice. Your phonics doesn't have to stop here and keep going, as well as using the software. That's a great way to reinforce the lesson. This concludes our time together, but doesn't, like I said earlier, have to conclude your time with phonics. Using your software, working with this practice page, reading the transfer car, cards, any of these things that we've talked about today are inside of the link if you're watching live, or um, there's a link full, excuse me, in the chat box if you're watching live, they're in the link below the video if you're watching the recording. Here you see on the screen our 800 number. If you have any questions, need help with direct instruction, questions with the lesson, or anything from the software. Here's our number, reach out to us, we'd love to help you and answer any questions that you have. Hope you come back, um, see us tomorrow for our next lesson. Bye friends, thanks Chloe, Bye. great job today. Thank you.